So you are left to wonder, where's Izzy at? Izzy thrives in tough situations. Izzy dominated Paulo Costa very quickly because he was mad at him. He doesn't like Drinkus Duplessis. I'm excited to see that angry Izzy. Yeah. Drinkus is... Okay, that guy is so big for so big for 85. Drake's Duplessis looks different. But as I now have gained an appreciation for his style, I know what it looks like to me now. It looks like a champion of the world. Here all we know is bust it up. I got some dirty spiders, so we're filling up my cup. My shooters come in clutch. You know you get in touch. We just finished UFC 304 a couple weeks back in Manchester, England. But now we head all the way to Perth, Australia for the next UFC pay-per-view. UFC 305 sees the return of the stylebender, Israel Adesanya, and he's looking to win back his middleweight belt against the champ, Drakus Duplessis. Then we got former flyweight title challengers Kai Kawa Franz and Steve Ersig going against each other in the co-main event. And lastly, we got heavyweight brawlers Tai Tu Ivasa and Jarzinho Rosenstrike looking to put on a show in the people's main event. Here in this video, I'll go over these three fights on the main card and see what fighters will come out on top this coming weekend in Perth. Starting this video off, we got Tai Tuivasa going against Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Tai Tuivasa was on a tear in the UFC at one point, having a 5 fight win streak, all of which were knockouts, against guys like Derek Lewis and Greg Hardy. He was then put up against the best heavyweight striker the division's ever seen in Cyril Gaon. Tuivasa would knock Cyril down in the first round, but would end up getting knocked out in the third round, losing his first fight since 2019. Unfortunately, that would spark a four-fight losing streak for Tuivasa, losing by finish against Sergei Pavlovich, Alexander Volkov, and Marcin Tybora. Tai is primarily a brawler that throws probably the heaviest shots in the UFC. Getting touched by one of those overhand rights puts his opponent right to sleep. Now he's looking to land one of those overhand shots to end his 4 fight losing streak. But he's going against a guy who's seen it all in Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Rosenstrike has fought the who's who's of the heavyweight division. Fighting Francis Ngannou, Junior Dos Santos, Cyril Gaon, Curtis Blades, and so many more heavyweight legends. He's a striker just like his opponent, winning 13 of his 14 fights by knockout. How this fight plays out, we're going to see two heavyweights go at it when the bell rings. The fight is going to end in a knockout, and I think Tuivasa is going to pull it off. But no matter what, this fight is going to be a banger. The next fight I'll go over is the co-main event between flyweight Kaikara France and Steve Ersig. Ersig is coming off a loss against the champ Alexander Pantoja after seeming to be gifted that title shot. But after watching the fight, he showed that he's among the best flyweights in the world. Ersig is a striker that has knockout power showing that off in his last win against Matt Schnell. His grappling is a problem though, getting taken down 9 times in his last fight against Pantoja. But he's going against fellow Oceania region native Kaikara Franz. Franz challenged for a title 2 years ago against Brandon Moreno, where he unfortunately lost by knockout. He would then fight a year later against an upcoming prospect in Amir Albazi, but would be completely robbed of a win by the judges, giving Franz a 2 fight skid. Now after fight cancellations and more flyweight politics, he waits another year to fight, this time against Steve Ersig. Franz is a striker that loves to put pressure on his opponents. We saw that in his last two wins against Cody Garbrandt and after Askarov, where he wouldn't take his foot off the gas in those fights. For how this fight plays out, Franz is going to move forward to catch him with combos, while Ersig will try to counter and catch him on the way in. I got Franz by decision. Now we come to the main event. Featuring the middleweight champ Drakus Duplessis going against one of the greatest fighters of all time in Israel Adesanya. Adesanya has been atop the MMA world since he made his UFC debut in 2018. A dominant kickboxer at glory, Adesanya is one of the best strikers in the UFC. He uses his length in his arms and legs to keep fighters away and is a sniper when he throws. Since his debut in 2018, he fought 5 times in a year span and earned an interim title shot against Kelvin Gastelum where he would put on an all-out war to win his middleweight belt. From then, he went to defend his belt for 3 years consistently and was looking like the second coming of Anderson Silva. Fast forward 4 years, and Adesanya will be without the middleweight championship, losing the belt in an upset to Sean Strickland. Adesanya would take a well-needed year off, but during that year off, 
He would hear a ton of call outs. Hey, Adesana, come to daddy. There was another guy who tried to take my shine. He lost his shine. Now I have your shine. You didn't get into the cage tonight, but Israel Adesanya, get your back in the UFC so we can settle the score. Now he's finally ready to make his return to the octagon against the current middleweight champ, Dracus Duplessis. Duplessis has been on a tear since he made his UFC debut in 2020, finishing 5 of 6 fights on his way to a title shot. He would knock out guys like Robert Whittaker and Derek Brunson before he would face off against Sean Strickland. They would put on a show for the Canadian fans, where Duplessis would win the fight by split decision. Unfortunately, a lot of people disagree with the decision, including Duplessis boss Dana White. I had it 2-2 uh, two two going into the last round. And I thought uh, Strickland won the last round. Dreykus likes to keep the fight on the feet, but he is competent in all aspects of the fight game. He can do some work on the ground, as showed by his 10 wins by submission. As for how this fight plays out, Adesanya will try to keep his distance and try to not get into a slugfest with Duplessis, while Duplessis will try to get close and take Adesanya to the ground. I think Adesanya still has some left in the tank and will win this fight by decision. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.